Hello and welcome to Wretched Excess Weekend, courtesy of Radically Rational and RadicallyRational.com. All right, let's, as they say, break it down. The Eagles have a very talented young quarterback who's had a heck of a season, no doubt about it. The Chiefs, on the other hand, have the best quarterback on the planet. The Eagles have a remarkable young general manager who has assembled a tremendous roster. They also have a hungry head coach who has achieved buy-in from all the players in his locker room. The Chiefs have the best offensive play designer and play caller in the history of the National Football League. Hmm. The Eagle organization is making its first Super Bowl appearance since 2017, and there are only seven players remaining off that roster. The Chiefs, on the other hand, are going to the Super Bowl for the third time in four years, and this is a case where I do think that Super Bowl experience matters. Knowing the drill on Super Bowl week is significant. Okay, so I'm picking the Chiefs, right? Eagles win. And here's the reason. Football is the ultimate team game. It really, in a lot of ways, the only team game. And top to bottom, the Eagles have the best 53-man roster in the league and one of the best in recent memory. The Eagles win the game. I can't get past that. All right, so let's get deep in the weeds here. Uh, both teams have really solid offensive lines, but while the Chiefs' offensive line is solid, the Eagles' OL is stellar. Now, the Chiefs, every now and then, they can get a little something going on the ground, especially with their super rookie, that seventh rounder out of Rutgers, Isaiah Pacheco, and Clyde edwards hilaire has kind of been up and down with his career with the Chiefs. He's off injured reserve. We'll see if he can go, but if he can, he can be explosive, and he may see if he can play the Super Bowl. This is kind of a redemption game for him. The Chiefs have got to run for 100 yards to have a chance because if the Eagles have a weakness, it's their run defense. We've seen that several times this year, but the only chance that the Chiefs have to keep that Eagle pass rush from eating Mahomes is to be able to move the chains on the ground at least from time to time. That's going to prove easier said than done. This Philly pass rush is historically great. It may be the best pass rush in league history. And as for the Chiefs pass rush, it can be effective, but it's essentially Chris Jones and some guys, you know. So it's going to be Difficult, if not impossible, for the Chiefs to get consistent pressure on Jalen Hurts, and that's going to be a big deal. And since he'll be protected and have time, that means that Hurts is going to have some deep ball shots to A.J. Brown and DeMonta Smith. DeVonta Smith, I should say. Now, the flip side is that Mahomes, who's still got to be at least a little bit hobbled, is not going to have a lot of time, and he's going to have to get the ball out of his hands very quickly. Now, you have to figure that a cornerstone of the Eagles' defensive game plan will be to not let Travis Kelsey beat them. Okay, and I think they can execute that. And remember that the Chiefs' wide receiving core is still battling through some recent injuries. I think that will be significant. Uh, and remember this, Kelsey is not the only great tight end in this game tomorrow. Philly's Dallas Goder is an absolute load and remember, as we referenced moments ago, he'll have those dragster wide receivers to clear things out for him underneath. So as counterintuitive as this sounds, the Eagles may actually have more offensive big play opportunities than will the Chiefs. Now, Andy Reid's done a remarkable job of adjusting his offense this year. In the past, they've been so explosive. Two plays, 67 yards, touchdown, Tyreek Hill, here we go. Well, they're still scoring a lot of points, but they're doing it in a different way. They're having long, double-digit play drives, and they've been very dependent on that. That's going to be really hard to do against that Eagle defense. Now, I'll be the first to admit that if there is an overrated stat that is occasionally irrelevant in football, it's time of possession. But in this case, I think it matters because... 
the Eagles are going to be able to pound the rock and control the ball and limit the number of Chiefs possessions over the course of the game. Um, the respective defensive secondaries, Chiefs had a great draft in that area. They've got young, talented players. The Eagles have talented, experienced, seasoned, nasty, smart players. Advantage, Philly. Hmm. This could come down to clutch field goals. Both got pretty good field goal kickers, but if it comes down to it, I would trust Harrison Butker of the Chiefs a little more than I would the Eagles' Jake Elliott. Okay, and finally, there's this. Both defensive coordinators now have had two weeks to tinker and game plan and scheme, etc., and they'll have some wrinkles, and they will be affected. As a result, I expect each quarterback to throw two picks tomorrow. So the question is, who battles through that ultimately? And the answer is the Eagles, 30 to 27. Stick that in your blue cheese, Jerry Mendiola. See, I can say that because Mendiola already hates me. I can do no further damage. The difference is that as a result of this prediction, my own sister now hates me as well. Hmm. All right. So... I want everybody to have a great time tomorrow. If there's some early developments, I will check back in with you tomorrow morning. If not, let's enjoy the Super Bowl, and we'll see you back here on Monday. Uh, one other thing, just remember this. It ain't easy being green, but sometimes you do what you got to do because we are radically rational.